Hey, how are you going? It's Donna here, the pet therapist, and I'd like to introduce you today to Boof. So Boof's owner reached out to me because she was having troubles with her rescue dog. She basically explained that Boof was really pushy and had no manners, uh, that he pulled on the lead when he was being walked and he just didn't listen, and that he chewed up the kids' teddies and anything he could get his teeth on, basically. So it sounded like he was running a bit of a muck. <laughs> Now she tried different collars and choker chains and using treats to help to train him, but just had no success. Now during our initial messaging, I explained to the owner that it sounded as though Boof just really needed some specific training. He needed to be taught boundaries, he needed some one-on-one -on -one training on the lead, and he needed to be trained not to use the kids' toys as his own. Because that's a thing to remember about animal energetic healing. It's not a quick fix or a magic button that just fixes misbehaving dogs. But it can get deep into the core issue of why a dog is behaving the way it is. And then it can release that issue so that training becomes easier with the dog being more responsive to it. So in the end of the day, the owner just wanted her dog to chill out. So what we decided to do first was work on helping him to feel calm and relaxed. Okay, so what mostly came up during our initial sessions to help calm him down, I'll quickly explain to you that I work with the physical, emotional and mental, spiritual aspects of pets. And what came up was the spiritual side and he needed his root chakra balanced a lot. So three times in a session was pretty norm to start with. And also his self-preservation, which is a minor chakra, which is related to the root chakra, and that needed to be balanced quite a bit. And it's all about him feeling grounded, uh, feeling safe and secure. Um, and an imbalance in the chakra can result in an insecure, fearful and non-trusting pet. His heart chakra also needed to be balanced every session. And considering he's a rescue who the owner knew had come from a pretty hard life, I don't think I need to explain why his heart chakra may have needed balancing. I mean, it's all related to unconditional love and the human-animal bond, which was lacking with his previous owner. Now, regarding physical aspects, what came up a few times was I needed to send both the frequency of an animal essence from my mentor's line of essences called Rescue Animal Recovery. It's used to help clear issues of abandonment, abuse neglect and trust and it's also about helping them understand that they are in their forever home now now considering Buff was predominantly an outdoor dog now he needed a lot of grounding which has a calming and relaxing effect what also came up within the first few sessions was the need to activate Archangel Michael for courage strength and protection and speaking of protection I quite often needed to surround Buff in an energetic bubble of protection which is all about protecting his energy after a few sessions, Archangel Gabriel was also needed, who's all about changing emotional situations. Which brings me on to the emotions that needed to be either balanced or released from Buff to enable him to feel calm and relaxed. Most of these emotions came about from his previous ownership. He just desired assurance and lightness. And lightness was all about releasing unwanted energy from his previous owner. I also needed to release anxiety, suspicion, a feeling of being blamed and a lack of faith in the future, feeling despondent. And an interesting one that came up was the need to release sorrow that he'd felt in the past life with the passing of a previous owner. Now it was after all this, around session six, what came up was an animal essence called training support, which is all designed to help support pets with all aspects of training, including focus, drive, enthusiasm, and fun. And it's great for animals who have difficulty, difficulty learning as well. This also came up in session seven, and it was a clue that Buff was now ready for the training that he needed. It was also after the sixth session that emotions came up that had more to do with the current owners. And session seven was also the one that indicated that no more sessions were needed to help him feel calm and relaxed. Um, the owner definitely noticed that her run amok dog had calmed down a lot. So at this point, we decided to work on Buff's issue of pulling on the lead. Although the owner had said he'd improved quite a bit, um, and I was also well aware that energetic healing might not help with this, but it was worth a shot. Initially, the need for the animal essence training support came up again. So I told the owner that whilst he was receiving this frequency, that it would be a really good time to do some one-on-one -on -one training with him. 
something interesting that came up in one session were three crystals Buff needed the frequency of, and that was alexandrite, which has a positive influence on the nervous system, rhodonite, which aids the central nervous system, and gold, which strengthens the nervous system. So I just thought it was really interesting how three crystals had something to do with helping Buff's nervous system as a whole. Anyways, um, brain integration came up, which is all about getting the left and the right sides of the brain working together. And specifically, lifestyle came up with the need to walk one-on-one. -on -one. So it just confirmed my suggestion to get stuck into some decent training. But you know what the really beautiful thing that started coming up, though? It was just evidence of Buff being in the family to specifically serve one of the owner's sons. Now, this son has a form of autism. And what came up on an emotional level was that Buff was reaching out with love and desired to be of service to the owner's son. And it came up really strong. And it made sense because since around session six or seven, the emotions Buff's, Buff was absorbing were pretty much all from the son. You know, when I'm given emotions, I always question who they're absorbed from and at what period of time the emotion was initially absorbed. For example, maybe it was like the 5th of April, 2023, and the owner could identify those emotions being experienced by her son at that time. So Buff had actually picked them up. And these types of emotions Buff would absorb from the son were things like feeling unsupported, issues to do with dishonesty, anxiety, bitterness, suspiciousness, disappointment. So not the kinds of emotions that would do anyone any good if held on for long enough. Now, something I learned during my course is that our animal companions are here for us. They too have a mission when they enter their lives. And part of that is to be with specific humans to absorb emotions that can cause dis-ease. It can sound a bit far-fetched to begin with, but I'm finding that with the more healing sessions I do, the more evidence there is of this being the case, especially with regards to repressed emotions. And when I give pet owners the dates of the emotions that come up in a session, it's very rare that I'm off. And to be honest with you, it can be quite revealing for me to be made aware of the emotions that come up for a person's pet. So the first important thing to note here is that I have no judgment. For me, what comes up is simply what comes up. You know, we're all human. And secondly, the emotions that do come up, I feel it's really important for the healing because healing our fur babies can be just as much about us as it is about them. So on that note, I'll sign off. I hope you enjoyed listening to Buff's story. He is walking on the lead a lot better now and remains a lot more calmer than he was before. And he's even stopped destroying all the kids' toys. So a pretty good ending if you ask me. And I believe a lot of it has to do with the fact he now feels safe and secure and he trusts that he's in his forever home surrounded by love. Until next time, bye for now.